Greetings, this is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries in John 8, 12. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. This is September 30th, 2020. Uh, you know what? Somebody sent me a uh, observation. And, uh, you know, it's funny. The abortion clinics are open. Liquor stores are open, Walmart's open, dollar stores open, but they're closed to churches, so-called. Actually, the 501c3 tax-exempt corporations are a business that just have the name church in it. You know, First Baptist Church, Second Baptist Church, Fifth Baptist Church, uh, you know, Holiness Pentecostal Church, uh, you know. But the, uh, the thing is, maybe the Lord is allowing these demon nominations to be closed. Maybe he's sick and tired of them teaching lies in his name. You know, persecution is going to be good for the true remnant church. It really is. You know, I, I was in a Knoxville, Tennessee for a couple years. I actually moved there to be part of a church that I thought was decent. This was back when uh, I didn't know uh, things that I know now. So I went from Florida to Knoxville and, uh, you know, I, I it took me a while to figure out that you can't reform Babylon can't be done. You know, you might have a couple people inside of Babylon that'll come out of her, you know, because the Bible says, come out of her, my people, that you be not partakers of her plagues. But uh, actually, reforming Babylon, impossible. So I left that church, went to another church that I thought was decent. And, uh, you know, they must have passed that collection plate around seven, eight times, nine times. I mean, you know, it was like, oh, okay, this is the general church fund, and this one's for the missionary over in Africa. This one's for the missionary over in Asia. This one's for uh, the building fund. Uh, this collection plate round is for the, the pastor's Cadillac fund. Uh, well, so, you know, something like that, right? But persecution's going to be good. It's going to get rid of, of the lukewarm and the cold. It'll get rid of them. You know, the Lord's not looking for quantity. He's looking for quality. Which is why for my uh, the life of me, I can't figure out why he would want me to be doing Bible teachings. You know, I, uh, I came into this kicking and screaming that I didn't want to do it. I mean, Jonah... Jonah was a lightweight compared to me, but, uh, you know, it's just one day, it was like, well, there's hardly anybody else doing it. There's very, very few Bible teachers that I respect and trust, very few, you know, most people get into this for money, you know, he even had a lawyer uh, that I was talking to, he it's kind of, I guess he was kind of fishing, uh, but he he was like thinking, oh yeah, how's the uh, the religious gig for you know making money? And I was like, you know, I'm not doing this for money. Gave me a perplexed look, you know, like, yeah, sure, buddy, you know, yeah, this is uh on this earth, it's surely a lousy paying job. I'm telling you. I shouldn't say that. You know, I've had some people send me some things, which I appreciate it. Uh, the computer that I'm using right now uh, was sent to me by somebody. They don't like me anymore, but uh, $900 HP, you know, beautiful. It uh, makes short work of the um, converting the audio files to videos. So, But the thing is, when the 
Churches are closed. People are going to start meeting at their homes like what they did in the book of Acts. You know? And somebody asked me recently, uh, you know, does the uh, home churches, do they need a leader? You know, I honestly, I, I don't know. I can't say yes and I can't say no because I don't know. I don't know if the home church has had a leader or not. Uh, but, you know, meeting at home churches was biblical. I mean, that's what they did in the book of Acts. You know, they didn't uh, ask permission from Rome or Jerusalem to uh, incorporate and be tax exempt. And uh, can I have a license to preach the gospel? A lot of people don't realize it. But one of the real, uh, reasons we had the American Revolution to kick out the, uh, the British in America, you know, they, they, they say it was, you know, taxation. And that was probably partly true. But do you know that to preach the gospel, you had to go to the Anglican Church, which is the... Uh, Today, it's basically England's Catholic Light Church. In the United States, it's called the Episcopalian Church. Uh, in America, the Episcopalians and the Catholics uh, recognize each other's priesthood and all that other stuff. They're sort of like cousins, I guess you could say. But the Anglican Church... If you wanted to go stand on the street corner and start preaching about Jesus Christ, you had to go to the Anglican church, be examined by your doctrines. You know, you had to submit what you believed, and if you what you believed didn't match up exactly with what they believed, uh, they wouldn't give you a license. Plus, you had to pay money. Yeah, you had to actually pay money to get a license and be examined for your doctrines to be able to preach the gospel. And that was what some of the things that uh, the British had and the English had imposed upon the American colonies. And I'm sure it's the same thing in England. And there was a uh, supposedly a Baptist preacher. And he refused to do that. He was like, well, you know, Jesus didn't ask Rome for a license. Peter didn't ask Rome for a license. Andrew and John didn't ask for licenses. So I'm not either. Well, they arrested him, tried him, and then they were whipping him with a bull whip. And a passerby came by as they're whipping him and his, his skin's all hanging down and his ribs are showing and there's blood everywhere. And uh, the uh, passerby went to the, uh, to the judge and he, he was like, Your Honor, what did this man do to deserve this? And the judge replied, Well, he refused to get a license. A license? For what? Well, he, didn't get a, he doesn't have a, a, preacher, a preaching license. And the uh, passerby, who was a believer, supposedly, uh, asked him, uh, Your Honor, have you no fear of God? And I bet you today, that, I bet you that judge is still with the rich man in the flames of hell. I mean, if I'd have been that... Uh, judge i think i would have paid the fee by myself but you know what can i tell you the man died the preacher the baptist preacher died of his injuries for what for preaching the gospel how many people today you think that's going to happen to with what is coming personally i'm glad these garbage churches are closed i'm glad you know, I want people to have, go to home churches. I want them to get rid of their lying, demonic, devil-possessed pastors. I want to see that happen. And I want them to have, oh, I don't know, maybe half a dozen people. 
with different Bibles. You know, one's got the King James, one's got the NIV, another's got the NASB. And then they're wondering, oh, wait a minute, what, what's going on here? Um, you know, as they're reading Bible verses to each other, and, you know, they've always been taught, well, you know, all the Bibles say basically the same thing, but do they really? Do they really? Let's read from the NIV. Isaiah chapter 9 and verse 1. Nevertheless, there will be no more gloom for those who were in distress. In the past, he humbled the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali. But in the future, he will honor Galilee of the nations by the way of the sea beyond the Jordan. Now keep that in mind. But in the future, he will honor Galilee of the nations. Keep that in mind. Uh, because I'm going to go to the verse where it said that um, where the uh, you-know-whos were giving everybody that believed on Jesus a hard time because they said, read the scriptures, for out of Galilee comes no prophet. I think that's in the book of John. I'll have to look it up, but we're, we're going to, you know, Jesus of Galilee, right? And they were complaining that, oh, there's no prophet that comes out of Galilee. But what does it say here in, in Isaiah 9? But in the future, he will honor Galilee of the nations by the way of the sea beyond the Jordan. Verse 2, the people walking in darkness have seen a great light. And what was that great light? Well, Christ, right? The light of the world. On those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. You have enlarged the nation and increased their joy. Keep that in mind. You have enlarged the nation and increased their joy. They rejoice before you as people rejoice at the harvest, as warriors rejoice when dividing the plunder. Okay, let's keep that in mind. Increased their joy. All right, what does the uh, exact same thing in the King James say? Verse 9, chapter 9, verse 1. Isaiah. Nevertheless, the dimness shall not be such as was in her vexation, when at the first he lightly afflicted the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali, Naphtali, and afterward did more grievously afflict her by the way of the sea beyond Jordan in Galilee of the nations. Huh. That doesn't even sound anything like what we read before, does it? The people that walked in darkness have seen a great light. They that dwell in the land of the shadow of death, upon them hath the light shined. Thou hast multiplied the nation and not, and not increased the joy. Huh. Wait a minute here. Wait a minute. Uh, what's going on here? The King James says, Thou hast multiplied the nation and not increased the joy. The NIV says, Thou hast multiplied the nation and increased the joy. So which is it? Increase the joy or not increase the joy? No, all the different Bibles, they don't say the same thing, just with different updated modern language and wording. Increase the joy and not increase the joy is not the same, okay? I mean, really, it's not. So, which one's right and which one's wrong? Well, when you find out that the NIV is owned by the company that prints, uh, whose parent company prints the Satanic Bible and the joy of gay sex and gay porn, uh, whose parent company is the Fox TV network, uh, you know, think about that next time you're reading Veggie Tales to your children. Yeah. Yeah, the exclusive printing rights for the NIV 
has some really sketchy garbage going on there. The King James has stood the test of time. But the point is, you got six people in a Bible study in a home church type setting. You know, they're going to run into these kind of problems. And then they're going to wonder, wait a minute, what, what's going on here? You know, one Bible says that uh, in Isaiah that a, a virgin would conceive. Another version of the Bible says a young woman would conceive. Well, guess what? There was a woman in South America that was six years old when she gave birth. Miracle of God or satanic subterfuge? You take your guess. I already know the answer to that. So the Lord's going to be, he's probably allowing these churches to be closed. You know, I, I, these TV preachers, I, it just, it kills me. Why do people think, you know, oh, well, they're on TV and they have big ministries. Somebody's supporting these people, okay? You know, they wouldn't be on television. The FCC, the Federal Communications Commission, regulates the airwaves, okay? And if they didn't like all these, uh, what's that? I think it's a Netflix show. It's like mild child pornography type stuff. I forget what it's called, but it's a new show that came out. I mean, all they would have to do is put the kibosh on that, and that would be it. It'd be over. But they're, you know, they always do things step by step. I mean, that's how they work. You know, they just don't do, uh, they just don't come out in the open in one big thing because they don't want to get a pushback. So they, they do a step here, and then they wait a little while, and then they do another baby step, and then another baby step, and then... Next thing you know, you'll uh, probably before too long, you'll be having children having, well, use your imagination. But uh, these uh, so-called church, church organizations, you know, they're not going to say anything to jeopardize their tax-exempt status. And besides, they're bought and paid for. But the thing is, the FCC, they, would, they, could, they could shut down any, any corporation that they wanted, if they really wanted to. I mean, the uh, Congress even passed a law that said that the uh, networks can lie on purpose, knowingly lie to us. I forget the name of the law, look it up, but uh, used to be they couldn't do that. But Congress passed a law that they can do it and exempted them from civil lawsuits. So, you know, it's basically state-sanctioned propaganda. I know a church that... Uh, I probably learned over well over half of everything that I know. They went to a Christian radio station and a Christian TV station, so-called, and was paying for airtime. And after, uh, I don't know how, how many studies they did or whatever, or sermons or whatever, they were told, no, we don't want you. You're not a good fit. Uh, I'm sorry, even though you're paying for this, you're too controversial. We don't want your money anymore. I mean, really, this is these are Christian radio stations. Um, I think it was Sermon Index that I was on. I'm not sure if it was Sermon Index. But I was on there and I uploaded a few things and uh, I was paying for it. I think it was Sermon Index. And they said, y you're not a good fit. And they basically removed all my content. So I wrote the clown back 
And, uh, well, you know, may the Lord judge between me and thee. And then I found out he was tied in with uh, one of the modern Bible version uh, things. And one of those ecumenical churches that are friendly with the Vatican and the you-know-whos, you know. All right, in Revelation chapter 18, verse 1. And after these things I saw another angel come down from heaven, having great power, and the earth was lightened with his glory. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen, and has become the habitation of devils, and the hold of every foul spirit, and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. For all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication, and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her, and the merchants of the earth are ratch, waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacies. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people. Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that you receive not of her plagues. For her sins have reached unto heaven, and God hath remembered her iniquities. When did the Passover and the Lord's Supper become Easter? You know, Easter, the spring goddess of fertility. You know, eggs, bunny rabbits, uh, playboy bunnies, anybody? You know? Look at the statue of Statue of Liberty. That's the goddess, people. That's the goddess. That's Semiramis. That's uh, she has many many names. Easter, Ishtar, uh, many names. The goddess. In some ways, the Catholics even, you know, they try to out make her, that out to be Mary. You know, Mary, the mother of God. They tell you. Well, how did, how did the mother, uh, you know, it, it's just, it's vile. It's vile, some of the things that they're doing. I mean, here it is that you've got rabbis coming into churches teaching. What are they teaching? I mean, they're basically, oh yeah, the Old Testament's true, but you know, yeah, your your New Testament, it's it's all messed up, you know. That's that's what they're teaching. If you see the the world doing something, you know it's probably wrong. I mean, read Jeremiah chapter ten, and then think about December twenty fifth about the decorating of the tree. And I've had so many people say, well, you know, we're not worshiping the tree, so, you know, it's just no big deal. Well, what they're saying is it's no big deal to them. It is a big deal to the Lord. It is. I mean, there's a reason why he allowed Israel and Judah to be taken into captivity. I mean, Judah was taken into captivity for 70 years. He wanted the old school heretics to die. And then he brought them out of Egypt. I mean, uh, I'm sorry, he brought them out of Babylon to try to, you know, retrain them. Just like when uh, he brought Israel out of Egypt. He, God took them out of Egypt, but he wanted to take Egypt out of them. That's why they wandered in the wilderness for 40 years. He waited for the old generation to die so that they wouldn't pollute the new up-and-coming generation. But we're a hard-hearted, stiff-necked people. And I'm speaking from experience. And I'm not pointing fingers at others. I mean, I'm looking in the mirror, because I know, I know, I know what I've 
the spankings I've had to go through to get my attention. You know, he almost he almost uh, killed me at one time to to get my attention. It worked, you know. And uh, I thought I was going to be crippled and disabled for life, but uh, I got a partial disability, but um, it's not too bad. But I thought I was going to be almost completely dis well, like unable to walk unassisted. So the Lord is gracious with mercy, and uh, but you got to come to Him His way. You know, you just don't uh, take the worldly practices like Christmas and Easter and and then uh, repackage it and then think, well, you know, you're doing him a favor. You're not doing the Lord a favor by going to a, a heretic church and throwing in a few bucks in the com uh, collection plate so that the pastor can buy a Cadillac or a Mercedes or whatever they uh, they have. I went to one church. Uh, the pastor used to drive a, a, a used Chevy to church, but uh, people knew where he lived, and he lived in a very nice community and home. And uh, he always kept the, uh, the brand new, really expensive cars in the garage. Well, I mean, he'd drive them around town, but... But on church Sunday, oh, he'd drive that old Chevy to, you know, the used Chevy to, to church. Oh, I'm, I'm a humble guy here, you know. But uh, I, don't remember, I don't remember what kind of car he had, but I remember it was expensive. And I remember my uh, dad always uh, saying he'd like to have one. But, you know, when you got a family and kids and just a regular job, who, you know, you can't afford that kind of stuff. So, so it's good. It's good that the churches are closing. It's going to be good when persecution comes. The church is going to wake up. She's going to be like a bride without spot and blemish. It's going to be good, people. It's going to get rid of all the... The lukewarm people, all the people that go to church to be seen, they're going to say, oh, I didn't sign up for this. What do you mean it's going to cost me my job? What do you mean it's going to cost me my house? I didn't sign up for this. My, you know, Benny Hinn's, I, I was watching Benny Hinn and he says, God wants me to be wealthy. Or is that Kenny, Kenny Copeland? Uh, or, or, is, or, or is there a difference? Another reason why they hate Paul, 1 Timothy chapter 6, speaking of Benny Hinn and Kenny Copeland, verse 1, 1 Timothy 6, 1. Let as many servants as are under the yoke count their own masters worthy of all honor, that the name of God and his doctrine be not blasphemed. But they that are have uh, but they that have believing masters, let them not despise them, because they are brethren but rather do them service because they are faithful and beloved, partakers of the benefit. These things teach and exhort. If any man teach otherwise and consent not to wholesome words, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ and to the doctrine, and to the doctrine which is according to godliness. He is proud, knowing nothing but dotting about questions and strifes of words, whereof cometh envy, strife, railings, evil surmisings. Yeah, you ever, uh, have you ever noticed people like that? They're proud. They know nothing. They're always dotting about questions and strifes of words. You know, well, in the original Greek or in the original Hebrew, this word means this. But the King James, it's, it mistranslated that word. Whereof cometh envy, strife, railings, evil surmisings, perverse disputings of men of corrupt minds, and 
destitute of the truth. You know what destitute means? You have nothing. Destitute of the truth. Supposing that gain is godliness. Oh, yeah. People think Kenny Copeland and, and Benny Hinn, because they fly around in a $60 million Learjet, that they're being blessed of God. Supposing that gain is godliness, from such withdraw thyself. But godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. And having food and raiment, clothing, and having food and raiment, let us be therewith content. Oh, yeah. But they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare, and into many foolish and hurtful lusts, which drown men in destruction and perdition. For the love of money is the root of all evil. Money's not evil. I mean, Job was rich. Abraham was rich. But did they love their money? Did they love their wealth? No, they loved the Lord. I mean, seriously. God blessed Abraham because, you know, God knew that Abraham loved him and he loved Abraham. And he knew if he was wealthy, it wouldn't make a difference. So, you know, I mean, King Solomon it's probably one of the wealthiest people that ever lived, ever. But sadly, it wasn't money that uh, corrupted him. It was uh, all those heathen, beautiful, gorgeous, probably, gorgeous, beautiful heathen wives. So, for the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some coveted after they have erred from the faith, and pierced themselves, pierced themselves through with many sorrows. That's right. There's going to come a day when you're either going to take the mark of the beast and you won't be able to buy or sell, or you're going to be content with what little you can carry or die for your faith. It's just it's going to happen. And very, very few churches are going to tell their people not to take the mark. Well, you know, pre-trib rapture, we're not going to be here for the mark. We're going to be flying out of here, praise old Jesus. We're going to fly away in the clouds. And then we're going to be having the marriage supper of the Lamb while everybody's getting slaughtered here on earth. All them unbelieving Jews, they're going to get slaughtered because they didn't believe in Jesus, but we're going to be flying away out of here. I don't think so. But thou, O man of God, flee these things and follow after righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, meekness. Oh, yeah. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life. Whereunto... Thou art also called and hast professed a good profession before many witnesses. You know, the Bible says that uh, if we confess Jesus before men, that he would confess us before the Father and his angels. And if we deny Jesus before men, that he would deny us before the Father and his angels. And I'm probably paraphrasing that, but hey, you get the general idea and has professed a good profession before many witnesses, I give thee charge in the sight of God, who quickeneth all things and before Christ Jesus, who before Pontius Pilate witnessed a good confession, that thou keep this commandment without spot, unrebukable until the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ, which in his times he shall show who is the blessed and only potentate, the King of kings and Lord of lords, who only hath immortality dwelling in the light, which no man can approach un, unto, whom no man hath seen, nor can see, to whom be honor and power everlasting. Amen. Charge them that are rich in this world, that they be not high-minded, nor trust in uncertain riches, but in the living God. That's right, they should trust, but in the living God, 
who giveth us richly all things to enjoy, that they do good, and they be rich in good works, ready to distribute, willing to communicate, laying up in store for themselves a good foundation against the time to come, that they may lay hold on eternal life. That's right. Use your riches on this earth to lay up treasures in heaven. Because all this junk here on earth is just going to burn up and pass away one day. Verse 20, O Timothy, keep that which is committed to thy trust, avoiding profane and vain babblings and oppositions of science falsely so called. Evolution, anybody? And oppositions of science falsely so called, which some professing have erred concerning a faith. Grace be with thee. Amen. So, home churches, good deal. You know, that's what they did in the Soviet Union when the you-know-whos were in charge and killing all the Christians. Those that went to the state-run churches, they found out that all the uh, clergy were KGB agents. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I. what about these FEMA pastors? You know? I, I didn't get my check from FEMA, so I guess I'm not a FEMA pastor. You know? Um, yeah. Look it up, FEMA pastors. Yeah, they're going to be teaching, I think it's Romans 13. Oh, yeah, obey government. Yeah, obey the government until they tell you to disobey the Lord. When they do that, well, then you know you got a choice to make. How about 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 6 and verse 14? Uh, but before we read it, listen, I'm going to uh, try to finish, God willing, uh, the um, Tabernacle series. Um I didn't realize what a, there is so much information on the tabernacle. I never realized just how much uh, all the Bible doctrines that are in there on the tabernacle. I'm going to have to do a multi-part study, and I got to decide, you know, what am I going to leave in? What am I going to leave out? Um, so I'm going to finish it, but... Um, you know, the way things are going now, you know, uh, I'm actually, I'm actually pleased that they're, like I said, I'm pleased they're closing these so-called churches. And I'm, I'm pleased that people are actually meeting at their homes. Uh, JS in California, you know who I'm talking about. Yeah. All right. So 2 Corinthians six fourteen. Paul writes, I don't know how anybody can say that Paul's a false apostle. I just can't see it. I mean, 2 Timothy uh, says that Paul's a brother. The book of Acts, they'd have to deny the book of Acts, which records Paul. They have to say that, well, you know, the Holy Spirit failed to warn the apostles that Paul was a fraud, which, you know... I mean, here it is, you've got to deny two books of the Bible and say the Holy Spirit failed to warn. Plus, when you read all this stuff that Paul writes, you know, he gives you so many warnings. Well, duh, that's why they want to get rid of him. Because he gives you so many warnings about uh, the man of sin, the son of perdition, uh, false teachings. Uh, so, let's read. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14. Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion hath light with darkness? That's right. Either you got light or you got darkness. You could have a very dim light, but, uh, you know... <sighs> It's either one or the other. You, there's, you can't have both. 
You know, it's, it's not like the dark side of the moon. And what concord hath Christ with Belial? You know, Belial is basically a satanic God type thing, right? And what concord hath Christ with Belial? And, or what part hath he that believeth with an infidel? And what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God. As God hath said, I will dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Wherefore, come out. Wherefore, come out from among them, and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. Guess what? God wants separation and segregation. What does the world say? Oh, segregation is evil. Oh, you can't do that. We're all equal, you know. Uh, whether you're a Buddhist or a Catholic or a Christian or a Muslim or a New Ager or, you know, a Hindu, it don't matter. All roads lead to the same God. Or do they? Wherefore, come out from among them, and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you, and will be a father unto you, and ye shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. Come out from among them. Don't be part of Babylon. I, I just, you know... Churches are churches in name only. There might be some decent people in a few of them, and you try to pull them out of the fire, but you can't. The leadership, I just don't believe it. If they were the real deal, they would have, they would have been called out in times past. You know, sometimes when I do Bible studies, I, I look at the um, other people's commentaries and what have you and their beliefs on like certain Bible verses. Uh, usually it's to see where they're trying to herd the sheep. And more often than not, it's, it's wrong. And, and you know, I kind of wonder, do they do this on purpose? Or is the Lord actually deceiving them and choosing their delusions? Now, let's go to Isaiah 66. That's kind of scary, isn't it? Isaiah 66. 66 books in the Bible, 66 chapters in the book of Isaiah. Now, remember, Isaiah and Jeremiah and Ezekiel were books of rebuke. A lot of the Bible's a book of rebuke for our wickedness. So let's read verse 1, Isaiah 66, 1. Thus saith the Lord, The heaven is my throne, and the earth is my footstool. Where is the house that ye build unto me? And where is the place of my rest? For all those things hath mine hand made, and all those things have been saith the Lord but to this man will I look even to him that is poor and of a contrite spirit and trembleth at my word what's a contrite spirit humbleness a lack of pride I'm guilty of a lot of things but pride is not one of them that's uh, -uh. verse 3 he that killeth an ox is as if he slew a man. He that sacrificeth a lamb as if he cut off a dog's neck. He that offereth an oblation as if he offered swine's blood. He that burneth incense as if he blessed an idol. Now, we're, they're talking about the priests here. You know, that's the thing. Um, 
one day they're doing sacrifices to the Lord, but the next day they'd be doing stuff for the devil. And their heart wasn't in it. I mean, it was just basically a ritual, going through the motions. He that burneth incense as if he blessed an idol, yea, they have chosen their own ways, and their soul delighteth in their abominations. Their soul delighteth in their abominations. Listen to this carefully. Verse 4. I also will choose their delusions. Do you know what a delusion is? It means to believe something that is not true. Uh, I've heard people say that, oh yeah, there's a crazy guy. He thinks he's Jesus. Well, maybe he does, maybe he doesn't. But if he does, he's deluded. Because he's not Jesus, but he might think he is, but he's not. That's a delusion. Uh, you know, believing something that's not true. The Lord says, I also will choose their delusions. God's going to choose something to make them believe something that's not true. I also will choose their delusions and will bring their fears upon them because when I called, none did answer. When I spake, they did not hear. But they did evil, evil before mine eyes and choose that in which I delighted not. Hear the word of the Lord, ye that tremble at his word, your brethren that hated you, that cast out, that cast you out for my name's sake, said, Let the Lord be glorified, but he shall appear to your joy, and they shall be ashamed. All righty, so home churches, people, that's the way to go. I'm actually glad they're closing down these businesses. Let them go bankrupt. They already are spiritually bankrupt. So, all righty, this is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of World Ministries. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to God the Father and His only begotten Son, the Lamb of God slain from the foundation of the world. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' precious name. Amen.